Hey everyone, it's Josh Gutman from Petri Pocus, back again with another review of a handheld ultrasound system. Today I'm going to review the Echo Iris. Echo is a relatively new company. They just released this Echo Iris transducer, which I've got here, in March 2024. It's got some awesome AI features and it's really cool i really noticed when they were doing their products they really listened to the customers and the end users when they were developing the ultrasound system so there's a lot of of nice features that are really great for the uh, end users and synologists uh, so uh, firstly uh, i just wanted to show this uh, dual head cable charger and so this attaches right at the end it's stuck in there so there's no question about it getting loose or coming apart and it has both the usb-c over here and the lightning over here. So you don't need to change and have different cables. That's really nice. The quality of the imaging is great. The AI features are really cool and they keep innovating those AI features just like a lot of companies. What's unique for the Echo Iris though is that the Echo Iris has the ability to calculate an auto ejection fraction in the parasternal long axis view which is really nice that none of the handled ones are uh, able to do. So an apical four-chamber view is often uh, more difficult than a parasternal long to obtain, especially for novices. So having the ability to provide an auto E in the parasternal long is really nice. This ultrasound system is different than any of the others in terms of its, its hardware and technology. It is both partially crystal-based and has an element of silicone in it, and they've patented this technology combining the two to be able to give imaging, but also at a cheaper price. So it's one of the most cost-effective systems that you'll find. It, it costs often $1,000 less than some other systems, and it's amongst the cheaper ones, and it, that they're able to do that via this technology. It's very affordable for the individual physician or practitioner who uh, would like to incorporate ultrasound, but has limited funds. And even if you have a lot of funds, it's still a, a great ultrasound system uh, to use. And that's because of their uh, new technology. I'd also just take, like to take a moment to uh, mention their um, enterprise solution for uh, workflow. Um, they call it Echo Works. Um, the workflow and enterprise solution, what I mean by that is um, their archiving system where uh, images can be uh, saved and, and sent to PACS or archived there and sent to billing. I got a demo of it and it looks really fantastic. Even if you're not planning on using the Echo Iris or you already have other ultrasound machines that you are already using, this system can be used from a desktop or a mobile phone and it feels like an iPhone when you're using it. If you take the images, let's say uh, on your phone or you need to pull up the work list, you can then swipe through normal, swipe through abnormal, add things in, and it really allows you to do everything right from your phone, which is really nice if you have to be in different places, if you cover different areas in the hospital and in a large location, you don't have time to go back to a desktop. There is a desktop application as well, so you can use it there. But I thought the interface was really cool. And so definitely contact them if you're looking for an enterprise solution because they really took feedback from the end users and really broke down a lot of the barriers to implementation of workflow and archiving. So make sure to check that out as well. Let's plug in and see what we got. Okay, so when you connect the Echo Iris, this is the first screen that you see. So over here, you can swipe easily through some quick intro on how to use the probe if you need to, or you can, if you don't need that, or if you've already done that, you can just choose one of those first buttons at the bottom, either beginning scanning or adding a patient, if you're gonna add a patient from the work list. So it's super easy to do right from the beginning of the screen. So let's go start begin scanning. And then the first screen that comes up, it looks like you're opening up your iPhone and you got a bunch of apps. So that's one of the things I really like. You can have your pinned ones at the bottom over here for ones you're doing a little bit more commonly and you have all of them over there. So it's as if you're on your phone and you're opening an app. Let's say I open up the eFast app. Let's say I'm gonna do an eFast. I put that on and, and here's the screen that you see. So you add on some gel and then you can see in the bottom there's three buttons. So this is the preset right here. This is where you can record or save an image. And then over here is where you will go to all the other features that you need, mLoad, Doppler, anything that's there, any AI capabilities will be there too. So now I'm on my right upper quadrant and you can see there the image is quite, it looks very nice. I need to change the gain. I do that with just a swipe of my hand, which probably is a little bit of gain. So I swipe right a little bit and the gain uh, turns up for me to be able to really see 
quite well. And then I can change the depth just by swiping my finger up and down. So it's very intuitive on how, I'm, how I would use my phone. You can see here really nicely, I, I have my uh, kidney and liver and Morrison's pouch, all a diaphragm, so nice high quality image. So if I want to save, if I want to save a clip of myself fanning through, I press this button down here, I save it through, and then I could fan. And when it's done, you can see it actually goes to the bottom of the screen and you can see a quick preview of the clip so you know what you've saved. And if you want to save a still image, you actually just have to tap twice on your screen. So this is my phone, I'm going to tap twice. And you can see that I was able to save it right there and save an image. If I want to annotate it, I can do that at that point, just right on the screen, right on your phone as you're scanning. And you can annotate it just like that. And so it's really intuitive. I can save it if I'd like. So let's close it up and unpause. And here we're back to the regular screen. I'm going to press on this bottom button over here. And so that pulls up the different options. I can put on color, motion, Doppler. I can flip the image one way or another if I need to. Settings, tour, just as it provides that other intro to the machine. So everything is available over here and you can see that right there. Okay, let's swipe out of there. And I want to take you to the cardiac preset because that's where a lot of the fun AI lives. Now notice when I first put it onto cardiac, on the top left, this button is on the left side. Typically when I do an echo, I like it on the other side and it's easy to flip around and it's something you can set to begin with but I noticed that up there. So if I just press my hand on it, which I'm gonna do now, it flips nicely to the other side. So here is an apical four chamber view. I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter, my apical four chamber, and let's play with some of the AI. So if I click on the bottom left button here, and I can see that there's AI listed right next to the Doppler. So let's go to that, and then we pull up the screen, and this will give us an EF. Let's go to AI. So first, what it's going to do is this is in the automatic mode. Here I'm in the parasternal long axis view, so let me change to the apical 4. So it sees it was able to read the chambers in the apical 4, and you see it's progressing along. And then it gives me a, a, an EF, and you can save that. Or you can do it again. You can also do it manually if you click on the manual mode there, and it'll still pop up when with all the chambers as you see it, and then you can start going. I press the button, and it gives you uh, an EF there that's quite similar. So I can save that. And so you can do that either way, the auto or the manual mode. And what, like I said on the in the intro, what's unique about the Echo Iris is you can actually also do it in the parasternal long axis view. So I'm going to go to the parasternal long axis. Here's the parasternal long axis. I got to hold it a little bit steadier. So what you'll see in the next clip is there's a number of bars at the bottom. There's about eight bars. And as the AI gets a good image, or as you get a good image, such as here in the parasternal long, it'll start to capture that image in order to acquire an EF. But if your image isn't great, then it'll stop recording that EF. So my parasternal long is not great. So at a point, I'll get a good parasternal long that will be good enough to be interpreted by the AI, but then I won't, and then it'll stop recording. And so this is great because sometimes patients move or sometimes you get a good image and then they breathe deeply and then your image isn't as good. So you can keep your probe there and it'll just acquire the right images to give you as accurate an EF. So I'm not going to go all the way till eight, but this is really just to demonstrate that it will wait for a good image and record and not just take a bad image. Though it, it is good at interpreting images that are not ideal, it won't incorporate the image that is not interpretable into your EF calculation. So
Here I'm holding it steady, the parasitical long axis, and it gave me an EF. But notice how it wasn't really a great image. I don't really have a great parasternal long axis view, as you'd know if you've seen my other videos. But certainly we can keep that. So it being done in either the auto or uh, manual mode. So let's end that. We'll go back and look at some of the other features. I'll show you the Doppler color and the quality of the imaging. So here's an apical five chamber view. And then we can go put on the color see the color functions nicely. You can change the brightness and the gain. For there, I turn the brightness up a little bit high at that point. We can use the pulse wave Doppler right there. Move the image over and it's just swiping with my finger on the phone. Let's move on to some of the other um, features. Let's look at the bladder. The bladder has uh, some AI in that. So let's check that out. So here's a scan of my bladder. So let's click on the options, AI. So it gets the bladder and then asks me to fan. So I fan along the bladder, other direction, and it pulls up a, a bladder volume. And then you can just go ahead and add that to results. And let's check out the last couple of more AI features. Firstly, let's look at the lungs. So I'm going to press with the lungs down here. And then similar to the cardiac, so here's my lung here, here's the A-lines. And similar to cardiac, I can turn on the AI. It sees where the ribs and the pleura is. And then it can either automatically count A-lines or B-lines. Go to A-lines, I can save. And that's one region. And then I can change to whatever region I'd like on the right or the left in order to continue doing ultrasound on myself in a different location. I can also turn on to manual so I can decide when to start putting on the start the auto beeline calculations. So even if the image is not perfect because of uh, anatomical reasons, the AI still works pretty well. So let's save and return that. Lastly, just show you the veins Here's my basilic vein that you can see. Again, I could change the gain. I could change the depth right on my phone. And the, the AI in here is called spot on, as you can see here in the corner. When you turn on spot on, you're not gonna see it because I don't have a needle, but it's gonna turn on needle enhancement. So if you're putting in a needle, go ahead and enhance that. Hopefully I'll upload a video of myself doing it at some point. So I can turn that off and then it also has a midline for ease of placing an IV. There you have it, the Echo Iris. I hope you enjoyed the video and checking out all the features of the uh, Echo Iris handheld ultrasound machine. As always, if you need any assistance with operations or education regarding POCUS, make sure to check me out at my website, petriepocus.com. Let me know, and I look forward to providing more videos.